In calculus, you're going to have to solve quadratics. In fact, you have to solve a lot of things, quadratics being one of them. Now, we have three methods of solving a quadratic. One, you can factor. Two, complete the square. Or three, you can use the quadratic formula. We're going to go through all three forms in this video. So step one, we can factor. Consider the following equation. Solve 2x squared minus 14x minus 60 equals 0. Well, the first thing that you're going to want to do is, hey, look, 2 goes into all three of these terms. So we can factor out a 2. Here we have 2 times x squared minus 7x minus 30 equals 0. Now, x squared minus 7x minus 30. We want to factor this down to two binomials. We're going to have x times x giving us x squared, but now I want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 7. So we're going to multiply to negative 30 and we're going to add to negative 7. The two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 7 are negative 10 and positive 3. Because negative 10 times positive 3 is negative 30, and negative 10 plus positive 3 is negative 7. Now that we've factored this, when we have three things being multiplied together and it equals 0, that means that one or all of these things have to equal zero. So that means that either two is equal to zero or this term right here is equal to zero so x minus 10 is equal to zero or this term right here x plus 3 has to be equal to zero. Well two is not equal to zero. That means that one of these two things have to be true. So either x is equal to 10 or x has to be equal to negative 3. If factoring is too annoying but you don't want to use the quadratic formula, you can always complete the square. To do that, step one is move your constant to the other side. So here we have negative 3x squared plus 12x equals 7. I'm going to leave some room here for a reason. Now we can only complete the square if the number in front of x squared, the coefficient of x squared, is 1. So somehow we have to move this negative 3 out of the way. To do that, we can factor it out. We'll factor it out of here as well. So here we have negative 3 quantity x squared minus 4x we've got some space, is equal to 7. Well here, we can complete the square. The way that we complete the square is we take the b term and we divide it by 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So to get this right here, we divide the b term by 2. And that becomes the number inside of our square. But then we have to add something inside of this polynomial in order to complete the square. How do you figure out what that number is? Well that number is the thing in here, the b over 2, squared. So we're going to square negative 2 and we get positive 4. Now to get this positive 4, what we did was we took the negative 2, the b over 2, and we squared it. So this part right here is the b over 2 squared. However, if we add positive 4 on this side, we have to add some number to the right hand side as well. But let's think critically. We're not actually adding positive 4 to the left hand side we are adding negative 3 times positive 4. We're adding negative 12 to the right hand side. Which means that we have to add negative 12 
to the left hand side or to the right hand side as well to keep everything in balance. And so now, here we have negative 3 times x minus 2 squared is equal to 7 minus 12 is negative 5. Now we want to isolate this square. To do that, we'll divide negative 5 by negative 3. So here we have x minus 2 squared is equal to 5 over 3. It's at this point that we can remove this square by square rooting both sides. So we'll take the square root of the left hand side and plus or minus the square root of the right hand side. This gives us x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. And finally, here we have x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. Now I know that in algebra and in classes past you've had to rationalize your denominator. And way back when, when we used slider rules, it was extremely important to rationalize our denominator. However now, not so important. We just played into a calculator. And so I'm not going to rationalize any denominators in this course. And right here is the equation, or is the answer, the two answers, 2 plus root 5 over 3 and 2 minus root 5 over 3. Finally, we can solve equations using the quadratic formula. In fact, this is probably what you'll use over the other two. So, our quadratic formula says x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a where the coefficient of x squared is a, the coefficient of x is b, and our constant is c. Well, here we go. x is equal to negative b, that's negative 5, plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared is 25, minus 4 times a times c. All over 2a. So here we have x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root. Let's see here. Negative 8 times negative 7 is positive 56. 25 plus 56 is 81. And this is all over 2 times 2 is 4. So here x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus 9 over 4. Now, negative 5 minus 9 is negative 14 over 4 is negative 7 over 2. And negative 5 plus 9 is positive 4 over 4 is positive 1. And so here are the two solutions, x equals negative 7 over 2 and x equals 1.